may use a lot of digital resources or just a lot of resources for planning some of your subjects, I have a great program for you today, a free one, that helps me to keep those things organized easily. Now, one of my most popular blog posts post is one I don't think I've ever talked about on here, and that is using OneNote. This is a program by Microsoft that is free. It syncs across platforms, so if you have like Windows and Apple, that it works for that. You can use it on mobile devices, and it will sync across all of them. And that is one of the things that uh, I love most about it. When I first started homeschooling with specifically with history, I used some planner sheets that I had found online. I think it was, um, I forget the blog name. Homeschooling in the Woods? No, not that one. Um, Acres, something, I don't know. I'll, link, I'll put it down here. And they were great sheets, but as we started adding in more videos and audiobooks and all of those things as our homeschooling evolved, it was getting harder to use that as paper or to get those things down on paper um, for me. And so I tried a couple different electronic resources. I tried a couple different homeschool online planners and nothing quite worked the way I wanted it to work. And then I came across the idea of using OneNote over on the Well Trained Mind Boards. I had never heard of OneNote. I didn't know anything about it. So, uh, to kind of give you a visualization if you've never used it, think of a bookshelf full of notebooks or of, full of binders. Binders, let's go with that because I think that's an easier, um, more applicable. And each of your binders which would be comparable to the note, what they call notebooks in OneNote. So you might have a binder for history, okay? So then you open up your, you pull it off the shelf, and you open it up, and you have different dividers in it. You have the little, little tab dividers. So you have, you start out with maybe three dividers, and then you put you pop the rings and you put a couple pages in there and each page has different notes, like a list of resources you want to do and um, list like less, one week's lesson plan on a page, next page and that's their lesson plans. Okay, and on in OneNote, those pages that you have in your binder would be the same as um, are called pages in there and the dividers you have are called sections. Okay. This may sound a little confusing, but really just visualize a binder like this. Okay. Now you are going through, you're watching some videos and you find some ideas. And so you open up your binder and you turn to the right divider section and you write down your ideas, you know, some resources that you want to use or whatever. That is what OneNote is. But the wonderful thing about it, besides the fact that it syncs across platforms and it's free, is that all your digital things can be linked in there. If you have a PDF that you find online somewhere, maybe a free printable that you have downloaded from someplace, or um, you've saved an article that you found online, at, you saved it as a PDF, then you can... Um, insert it right in there, either as a link or like, the file itself. So, you know, um, your physical binder comparison, maybe you pull an article out of a magazine and you tape it in there. That would be something that's comparable. Um, books for OverDrive, you can place the links in there. You can create, if you want to use it um, as a way of, like, um, assignments for your children or you just want to be able to give instruction to them, you can create your own audio file. You speak into the program, it saves the file, and then it's in there and your child can listen to it and have you, you know, listen to your directions. You can put in mp3 files that you find on the internet. You can insert YouTube videos either as a link or embedded in it. There are so many ways to use this and that's what I love about it. You can really customize it to be however fits your homeschool needs. 
specifically for history, again, visualizing a binder, I have a divider um, or a section for <clears throat> lesson plans. And then within that divider, each page or page in Microsoft is an, a week's lesson plans. And then in there I can, I list, we do history usually three days a week. So that's what I have listed. I put in what readings we're going to do from the text, what books, literature books, story books that we're going to use, any links to videos that I want to do, audio books, pictures. If I find, you know, if you're studying Alexander the Great and you find a map of his um, territory or his, uh, what's it called? Territory is not the right word. Anyway, whatever, his kingdom, I guess. You can copy the image and put it in there. So that's what I have on each page. Now I have different dividers. One is for my lesson plans and then second one is for resources. So I have a you know one for each of our four years of story of the world. And if I am watching a video and I get an idea, well, I can turn to that divider and I just list it in the resources. I may not know what week I want to use it or with what chapter, but it's in there. And then when I go to plan it, I've got it. And then I have a third one for activities. So, um, you know, if there's a, some kind of a craft you want to do, you can put it in there. You know that I'm not big on activities. So mine doesn't have a lot of activities in there, but if you are really good at that, great. You could do, um, within that section, you could do pages for each of the activities you want to do. And in that, you could list the, all your supplies and the directions, however you want to do it. Now that's the way I've set up it. I know other people create sections for each week or each, um, yeah, each chapter, each week. I prefer to have all my lesson plans kind of within one section. For me, it's easier if I have to copy and move things around. That's another huge advantage is it's really easy. Then if you need to move things, you can do that. You can save then everything, all your lesson plans, and um, use it for the next cycle that you're going through when you get to it again, or um, you can easily share it with other people as well. You can export each of the pages as a PDF if you would like to have a printed version too. I know a lot of people, sometimes myself included, I like to have a PDF or a printed thing even if I'm using digital planning. So you can do that. I have one note on my iPad and that's what I just pull out each time we do history. I can just, I pull it out and then I've got my directions or my instructions for the day. I will also keep um, a section at the beginning of each, in each, in each divider or each section. At the top I have the reading list for the year that way if I'm at the library and I've forgotten to put items on hold, then I can easily look and see what is needed for the coming weeks. Um, let me te check over my notes and see if I have anything else to say about it. Um, I don't think I really do. A couple other ways I use it. One, I have a sec or a notebook or again, think of your binder, for each grade level. And I put, like so, open up fifth grade, and I have a divider or a section for Elizabeth, and I listed all of the curriculum that I used for her in fifth grade. I also have a page of just general notes, things that worked, didn't work, that sort of thing. Now Ben is going to be in fifth grade, so I have a new divider for him. I'm able to grab ideas from Elizabeth's, I'm also able to look over my notes of things from her year as I start planning it out. And then when I get to Matthew in a couple more years, I'll be able to pull up what I've already done and you know get ideas from there as well. So that's another way that I use it. There are so many ways to use it. I mean, people use it for like their shopping lists and their meal planning and all of those type of things too. 
this is just the way I the only way I've used it so far primarily I use it for history I also use it for science that's the only actually the only successful way I've our most successful science year is the year that I used one note really well for it coincidence I don't know but that was our physics year not this past school year but the one before 2016-17 that was our most successful science year, and one note, I think, definitely played a huge part in it. So, if you are interested, I will, I mean, it's just, you can Google Microsoft OneNote, but I'll also have it linked below. I will be having a video coming up, hopefully in the next couple weeks, showing you kind of a step-by-step -step of how I plan it. I have, it, it's going to be called like a plan history with me video. And... So I will show you there, step by step. If you are interested, be sure to hit subscribe so that you don't miss that. I will also have linked below my, um, the blog post that inspired this video. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that I haven't really talked about it. So if you are interested in seeing how I really set it up, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss that video. I'm gonna try to have it up within the next couple weeks. There are other there are great videos on YouTube for it, instructional guides if you um, want to search for it. There, if you specifically search for like you know using OneNote in your homeschool, you're going to find less um, because there's just not there's just not a lot, which I think is unfortunate because I think it's a really great way to organize all those myriad of resources, especially digital ones. So, um, link down below for the, for Microsoft, or for OneNote, and be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss my video showing you how to actually go about setting it up. Thanks for watching.